Good morning. Hello. This is Medical Data Mining. We are in uh, Unit 2, which is the first unit uh, after the introduction. And we begin with the main subject of machine learning. And in this case, it's unsupervised machine learning. It's one type of machine learning that we call uh, as like the process of moving from data to information to knowledge. And uh, we will first uh, begin talking about the first chapter will be just about inference. Uh, then we will discuss one of the main uh, problems in unsupervised machine learning, which is clustering. We will break with uh, how we quantify uh, a problem. How do we quantify a problem? Right? Uh, then we will discuss two very nice algorithms. One is k-means and the other is Gaussian mixture models. So let's begin with uh, the idea of inference. Uh, we depict uh, some kind of a virtual ladder that begins, it's called the ladder of inference, that begins with reality that we measure and therefore create data. And then from data, we create information using algorithms that uh, derive insights from that raw data. And from information, we can go up in the ladder to other higher hierarchies of uh, information, like knowledge, wisdom, and then after we have some kind of wisdom, we can create a decision. And that's uh, where we, uh, when we create the, the decision, what do you think is the next step? We make some kind of an action, right? So the action probably influences the reality. And then we have new, oops, sorry. And then we have new reality. And that new reality, again, we can measure, create data from data to information to knowledge and so forth. So we are talking about uh, this virtual ladder of inference um, that we begin by uh, measurements and we make good insights out of them. And here, I'd like to show you this, um, this paper uh, from uh, Nature Biotechnology. Uh, and this uh, paper is about uh, the platform that I showed you last week in the introduction, uh, which is patient, uh, patients like me. And they uh, proved here in this research that uh, they, had, uh, they, were be ab they were able to um, discover uh, clinical insights just from this self-reported uh, platform or patient data uh, collected online. And uh, this uh, what they call patient matching algorithms. In other words, patients like me. So just a reminder, a patient like me is a voluntary, uh, some kind of a voluntary social networks where patients in different diseases can open their own profile. It could be anonymous or not anonymous, with or without even a profile picture. This is the case of an ALS patient. And what's so nice about it, it does is that it is very inviting because of social elements, but also regardless of the social interactions that maybe are the, is the best reason or the number one reason that people go to this platform on the first place, from the first place, they are also able to put inside their own medical data. And in this case, it could be in the, in the case of ALS, it could be movements and uh, pains and so on. So they can over time, each day, each week, they can report themselves of uh, their uh, measurements. They can give the data. And of course, and they can give it uh, over time. That's very important. It is over time in different kind of variables and what kind of drugs they used and what kind of symptoms they suffer from and so on. Uh, and what's so nice about it, it's not that it's only one patient that does so, but of course, many patients actually many, many patients. And when we have such abundancy of, of medical data from several patients, what we can do is this kind of time machine or this kind of prediction. So this is a specific patient that we measure his uh, or he reports his uh, movements over time. So unfortunately, it, gets, it uh, goes down. And we can see like here, the statistics, if you can see the shades, you, we see this Gaussian where we see where all 
um, uh, or the most of the population is. It's around this area. And uh, this is the statistics. But we are not interested only in statistics. We are interested in the individual level. So let's find individual patients like him, not all the patients of ALS, just individual, individual patients like him that you can see here. So we can see their timeline or they, their time series over uh, different um, eras. We can like combine the, uh, all those uh, very similar uh, patients for, like a group and project what will be according only to this sub-segment in population we can project what would be the uh, progression of the disease in this specific individual. So this is something that is very powerful just because we have a lot of data also smart algorithms but first and foremost just because we have a lot of data, much more, much more than in clinical trials. Of course, the data is not as controlled and as randomized and so on as in clinical trials. Here, it's the power of data, the power of big numbers, if you will. So we can make cr create just for him a very or a much more accurate prediction about the future. And so they reported that and they did a lot of uh, statistical analysis, of course, to um, uh, validate their findings and actually their findings uh, came out to be very accurate. So this is uh, the motivation uh, of uh, what we want to talk about. And we also discussed last week the problem of such data, the problem of time series data. Here, for example, uh, we measure um, uh, virions over time, uh, and uh, all the dots represent times that the patient came to the clinic and gave blood. Just so you know, here we go a bit into the mathematics, this scale is logarithmic. Okay, and if you know in logarithmic, in, if you use a logarithmic scale and you have a linear line, what does it mean? It means exponential, right? Because the, uh, when the scale is logarithmic, each, each um, a linear line, each line is actually an exponential behavior. And this is usually what we see in biological systems. Okay, so um, we discussed that one thing that we can do very easily, and this is what many people do, they just connect the dots. But what we are interested in is about different kind of interpretations. So we say, yes, not, us not necessarily uh, the behavior, the natural behavior was exactly like, like, like the following, that the ca patient came, ga gave blood, and then he went home. The virion, the viral load went up, in, uh, increased, until a miracle happened. What was the miracle? He came to the clinic again, gave blood, and ever since this operation, the miracle started to work, and his viral load decreased. So, of course, this is not reality. It's just the problem of sampling, it's the problem of noise, and as we said, there could be different interpretations to the same data. Or the data is one thing, the information that we can derive from the data is something else. So, uh, looking at it, we can understand that uh, uh, the different ways of making information out of data could be split into two main disciplines. There's the statistical discipline, the statistical approach, which you know, and then there's the individualized approach. And what's so good about the statistical approach is that it looks on the population. So it looks at all the data, which is good, but it ignores, it does, it does something like an average, you know, very roughly, I could say it does an average. Statistics does an average on all population. But the con here is that it ignores unique patterns. So if what, I don't care if I'm the patient, I don't care about all the rest of the uh, ALS community. I'm, I care only about me. And if I'm not like in the average, uh, I'm not the mainstream patient, then what do I care about statistics? So we have the second approach, which is the individualized approach. 
And the individualized approach is uh, great because it's individualized. It's just for me. But then if it is an individualized approach, then it ignores other data sets. So you need to decide where you want to be to take into account other data sets and then you become more statistical or if you want to do some kind of individualized approach. And uh, there are different algorithms and we will touch uh, the different algorithms in different, uh, um, um, this in, the, in these two different disciplines. Uh, but of course you can understand that the best thing is to combine the two, to make uh, something that is both individualized but also statistical. And this is what we will try to do now. And the first problem that we will look at is the problem of clustering. Wow. 